Well, this is a bitter pill, but surrounded with warm words. And it's a bitter pill because the OBR there, the official people, are saying that the average person in our country in the next two years will see a decline in their income's value by 7%. That's a lot of money. It's one pound in every 14. You would have lost spending power within two years as a result of this budget. And what do you expect from a government that's in a crisis? And they've made the crisis over the last 12 years while they've been in office. Can you talk to me about that in layman's terms? What do you mean by you lose spending power? What does that mean? Well, if prices go up and your wages go, go up to the same level, then you lose the spending power. So, you know, a pound will buy so much now, in two years it will buy so much less. So, and that's what's going to happen. And the official forecasters are saying that is what's going to happen. We're also hearing from the OBR that taxes will now rise to the highest sustained level yeah. since World War II. Yeah. Are the Tories right to raise taxes? Well, they've raised taxes in a number of ways. They've also taken a lot of money out in cuts as well. So between the two, they've taken a huge tens of billions of pounds out of the British economy. And that is going to have an effect on unemployment. People are going to lose work or they're going to be paid less as a consequence. This is all deliberate. It's a deliberate strategy by the Tory. What they haven't done is they haven't touched wealth. The big companies, the private individuals who are really running this country because they've got the power to do so and because they've got the greed to try to increase their profits at the expense of everybody else. Power and greed is what the Tories understand. We've been told that it's justified, these cuts, because we've got this huge spending black hole. I don't know if you know much about this new celestial body, but what do you make of it? Is there a black hole? Well, look, I mean, the, the country uh, has had to borrow money to get through the uh, pandemic crisis. That's obvious, and uh, we understand all that. But what they're doing is something different because they're trying to tackle inflation by pushing down people's wages and salaries. And that's the real problem that we've got. But they're allowing prices to rip. And how's that coming about? Why? It's because they think that somehow or another, the rich and the big corporations are gonna let that money trickle down, but that does never happen. And therefore, you know, the whole strategy is wrong. And, you know, we need them to go and, re and replace them with a different kind of government. I mean, there was some tax of rich in there. So the threshold has now been reduced to 125,000 for the 40 uh, pence tax rate. Yeah. You're also gonna be paying a higher rate if you're on over 150. Is that enough? No, it's not enough. And it doesn't really touch the wealth. The wealth is in the billionaires, not the people who are on middle and upper incomes. I do think the riches should pay a little bit more. But the truth is, you know, for example, if you earn money from dividends, uh, you haven't earned it by work. You've earned it because you own wealth. Or if you get a capital gains by selling an asset for more money, you pay less tax than if you work. So why do we pay people who earn money not by working, less tax than those who do work? That is wrong. It's a Tory policy. All of this is going to be changed if we're going to build a different kind of country, a more caring kind of country, and one which says, we can't go on with the structures of power and wealth that we've got in our society. But would people vote for that? Well, they're not, well <laughs> they've got a choice, haven't they? And if the election's not too far away, wages are going to go down, salaries are going to go down, the cuts are going to increase, uh, the cost of fuel is still going to go up, you're going to see your community charge, the money you pay for the local council going up because they're not going to subsidise the councils properly. You're under pressure and unemployment is going to rise, all because of a deliberate action by a Conservative government which thinks somehow that inflation is caused by wages and salaries going up, which it isn't. It's caused by the greed and power of the wealthy and the big corporations in our society. And that's what needs to be tackled now. Look, there's a job to do persuading the public, um, but I think that they're ready for change. You can see that on the streets and when you speak to people in my patch. How different do you think this budget is from the last one? Do you think this is a more sensible budget? Uh, well, the language is different. Like I just said, it's a poison pill, but surrounded by warm, comforting, glowing words. But if you look at the detail, Look at the detail. What's going to happen to your household budget? It's going to go down. You're not going to be able to buy as much. They've put up a little increase, increase on the minimum wage, 52 pence an hour. How they buy you a loaf of bread. Uh, and your rent's going to go up. Your poll tax or community charge is going to go up. Your wages are not going to increase very much. It's a very difficult situation that ordinary people are facing. Do you know that one in nine British people last year had to use a food bank? 
because they couldn't feed themselves. And that's people in work as well as, well as people out of work. And now they've announced they're going to crack down on people through no fault of their own or on benefits, perhaps because they're ill or handicapped or whatever in some way or another. You know, what kind of government is this really? Well, I, I suppose that there was a little bit of help for social housing renters. They were told that instead of an 11% increase to their rent next year, they could see a 7%. Well, seven percent is unattainable because, well, first of all, we've just said wages and salaries are going up by six six percent at the moment. A seven percent increase in uh, the rent, then the council tax, then food, heating, lighting. People are in, people are struggling. You know, the I think forty percent, four out of ten people, two out of five, have got less than a hundred pounds savings. They can be gone in a single month. And I dread to think what the people I represent are going to face in the coming weeks and months. It's quite an astonishing figure. Do you mean they have a hundred pounds in the bank? Hundred pounds. Well, that may be at the post office, maybe tucked away under the under the bed, wherever it is. Around about £100 saving. Many, many people have not a penny, and I don't know how they're going to survive. And, you know, it's a cold hearted, brutal economic system we've got created by a government. It's a nightmare created on Downing Street for those people who are hungry today. So you don't buy that it's global headwinds that have caused all of this? No, I don't. I mean, look, on the food supply issues, obviously there's been a problem with Ukraine, but the figures I gave you about food banks was before the Ukraine war started. So the poverty, the hunger, there are people who can't put clothes on their children because they can't afford them going to clothes banks to put clothes on their children. What a horrendous society we live in. It's a Tory, it's a Tory world, it's not acceptable, and this budget is going to make things worse. I mean, we were told today by Jeremy Hunt that uh, Labour are not interested in growth. I mean, what would you say to that? Well, the country needs growth, and I'm quite clear about that. If you, it's a technical answer, but let me just give it. If you look at the average wage in my constituency, it's almost £10,000 less than it is in other parts of the country. A year, £10,000 a year less. And the reason is, is because there's been no investment in the north of England, particularly in places like mine, which is a former mining community. If you don't invest, the workers can't produce more profits and more goods and services, and therefore they can't pay higher wages. So we do need growth, we do need investment, but we don't need growth for the wealthy. We don't need growth in profits for the big corporations. We need money in people's pockets. And by the way, they will spend that money in the local shops and supermarkets, the clubs, the restaurants, and all the rest of it. Pay tax, and it'll be a virtuous circle going upwards, uh, making the economy a better place than it uh, is now. You don't think the Tories have achieved that in the last 12 years? Well, the Bank of England governor was in the House of Commons on Tuesday. What did he say? He said that we're in a serious problem. He said that the British economy has gone down since 2019 when COVID started by 0.7%, it's a lot of money actually. Whereas in America, it's gone up by 4% and in the Eurozone, it's gone up by over 2%. So we're in decline, we're a great country, but we're in decline. We're in decline after 12 years of conservative government. I think everybody knows that. It's time for a big change.